Yasmina Zbanic, uh, very happy to, to see you again. You are a, a Bosnian directress, and uh, we know you in Les Arcs since 2013, when we, uh, you were the first person that we awarded as the Femme de Cinéma, with the Femme de Cinéma Award, and you came with your film for those who can tell no tales. Um, and um, you were on the jury in uh, 2018, as far as I remember, so you're kind of part of the family, and we're very happy to, to have you back uh, with us, kind of in Les Arcs, <laughs> but uh, with the heart. And uh, Jasna Dorisis, you are, um, you are a, a Serbian actress, and uh, we also know you in Les Arcs uh, with the film uh, um, um, White, 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 White World. World, that's it. And uh, you, 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 you had the, the prize for best actress at that time. Yeah. It was in yeah. 2010. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Boris Izakovic, you, you also played uh, in the same film, uh, White White World, as far as I know. And this year you are also in the film that is in our programmation, uh, OTAK. And you are also a Serbian actor. And uh, yeah. I, welcome to all and thank you for uh, sharing this uh, moment with us where we are going to talk about uh, uh, about uh, this uh, beautiful film that and very very touching film that you made uh, Yasna. Yes, it's uh, I was uh, Yasmila I was uh, wondering uh, something because there is a uh, many film about the the conflict I mean the the Balkan war and from uh, Winter Bottom to uh, Denis Stanovic, No Man's Land and Godard and so many but there is a few I'm just one about the massacre of Srebrenica so I, I think first it's a uh, how come it makes so many years uh, to make a film about the massacre, and when did you start, uh, Jasmila, to think uh, to process uh, the idea to make a film on this topic? I have a feeling that since um, I heard what happened in Srebrenica, which was very shocking for all of us, it was during the war and um, for people to lose. At that time, we didn't know that people are killed. We just heard that safe area is um, given up. And this feeling that you are not safe, that there is no security, that you cannot protect human rights anymore, that you have nothing to believe in, stayed in me really for a long time. I didn't know I will make a film about it, but it was. I was also always coming back to, to, to this feeling. What is it in the world that gives us stability? What are our institutions are doing? To, to, to help us out in, in these situations. And, um, you know, some 10 years ago, I uh, started reading a lot and thought, okay, I, you know, I would love to do the film because it's so dramatic. It has so many uh, potentially interesting film elements in it. But I was... Um, thinking I'm not able because it's too much. And this subject is also very politic, po um, very hot politically in, in our area. On one hand, Srebrenica genocide is uh, denied. On uh, the other hand, there are also mythology connected with the, you know, with the victimization. So every political uh, system has its own interpretation of Srebrenica and they are loaded with emotions and uh, conflict. So I knew if I start doing something like this, it will be a lot of um, tension um, and, and forces against the film. So in a way, I was subconsciously uh, not thinking I can I can um, go into this, but then it was for me just um, clear that it doesn't abandon me, my imagination and my soul. So uh, you know, I read everything I could. I talked to as many people, and then um, Damir Ibrahimovic, my producer, and I, we just said, okay, let's jump, let's let's go into this. Yes, I didn't see the film in Venice, as I remember. Maybe I'm wrong. It's just an idea, but I was uh, I was uh, surprised and in a good way. In the film, there is no archival footage. It's most of the film talking about an historical. You see um, the trial of someone and and things. It's not in your film. And uh, I was after the film. I was of course I love the film. I told you immediately. And uh, but I went immediately to Wikipedia to see okay what's happened. Was it real? Because I, 
I knew, but not exactly the Netherlands soldiers, and UN, and everything is true. And what I was, I noticed when I talk with people who saw the film in Venice, they say, oh, it's happened when I was 11 years old, it's happened when I was 20 years old, it's happened we are alive, and it's happened yesterday. So I think it's, uh, this is uh, just uh, my, my impression. But tell us a little bit why you did want to include uh, archive, black and white or color archival footage of uh, this um, drama. I think for many Europeans, this is a, a known um, situation, as you said, people remember some footage, some things. M many people don't know really what happened, but today, you know, the, the name rings a bell. Um, and people saw something from the footage, you know, at least these big masses with UN seeking for help. I didn't want to have uh, this kind of documentarism because I think people are already with these kind of images, they are already in one stage of thinking and emotions. And uh, but we decided to go um, to reconstruct in a filmic way some of the things so that we have a possibility of um, identification with the, with characters. For me, this was very important that people don't observe it from a distance, that as much as possible people are in the situation. And uh, we did use a lot of this footage to um, to reconstruct, you know, we really tried to be authentic in a sense of uh, costumes, of in sense of um, who is talking what. Uh, Boris can tell you also when we talked about his role and 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 General Mladic, these historical characters that existed. Of course, with Aida, I can do whatever because she's a fix, fictional character. But um, with these historical people, we tried to uh, really keep their sentences, to to really not uh, make this story uh, less valuable because somebody will say, "Okay, this is not how it happened," because for our region, it's very important that we show. Um, facts and elements that were there. And, um, you know, even if I did transcript for a role of Mladic, uh, sometimes Boris would say, oh, it wasn't uh, exactly this word was coming here. I want to um, keep it the way it was. So we really thought this is also um, value to, you know, to, to um, not to imagine stuff, but to shine a different light and uh, have a different perspective on what was on, on what was going on, and to keep as much as possible people uh, in the situation, because I think it's very important that people feel and go through through Aida's shoes through the through the film. Boris, I have a, a question that uh, might be a, a little uh, trivial, but uh, uh, it's always a uh, Interesting to ask this uh, to an actor, but uh, uh, you you have the role of uh, Radko Mladic, which is one of the worst person of the recent history, and he um, committed uh, uh, committed a genocide in the name of uh, of your people, the Serbians. So I'm I'm wondering, when you have this kind of role, um, how do you apprehend this? Because uh, are you just like focusing on I'm I'm an actor and this is my job? And I'm just doing a role, or uh, is this like something political that you want to do when you do this? How do you apprehend this? First of all, yeah, like like you you are saying. Uh, first of all, I was uh, really in in serious doubts if I need this role, but the Yasmila was very persuasive and. Uh, at the end, uh, I said, I said yes. And after that, uh, you know, uh, we actors, I think, uh, we are prepared to do such a things uh, in the name of the humanity, you know, and in the name of, of love. And uh, that's, that's our main protection from uh, characters uh, like this, you know. I knew exactly why I want to do this movie, not exactly, not uh, particularly the, this part, but this movie. Uh, and as an actor, I always, always 
and I'm still uh, trying uh, to get the whole picture, to get the whole script, you know. And after that, it's only only one part. And uh, this wasn't easy, for sure. And uh, nowadays, when the movie is going out here in this uh, in this region, you know, you can we can see even even more that uh, divided opinions. Uh, which Yasmila was talking talking about someone saying that I'm a I'm a traitor you know and I have to leave the country after this you know I'm preparing my answers concerning the the part you know many many uh, many actors played the role of Hitler you know also so are they traitors you know <laughs> That's my question, you know. But uh, this was at the end, it was the mm, very simple to do this, this character for me. Very simple because everything was on, uh, on the YouTube, you know, and I committed myself watching uh, uh, those footages and those videos, you know, endlessly, you know, I was preparing like that you know just observing trying to end at the end you know what i what where i got it it's it's not we are not talking about uh, uh, digging uh, uh, digging a, a, a deep hole to find this guy you know it's it's really very on, on surface, you know, it's just one idea. He's, an, he's a soldier, you know, and he is doing things with the, with the easiness. And what I try to do to get to that easiness, you know, like it's everyday job. You know? And that's that's why when i think about that it's uh, that is what's the frightening thing that there are people who do who are doing such a things with so much easiness yeah <clears throat> like you are going into shop to buy some bread you know yes now um, as for you it's uh, it's very different because uh, your character is very uh, uh, courageous and 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 uh, uh, resilient also in, in the end and uh, uh, shows a, a lot of, uh, I mean, she inspires a lot of empathy. Uh, where did you get your inspiration for, for such a character? Interesting question. I, I mean, uh, everywhere, everywhere, yeah. And, uh, uh, I saw a lot of mothers, a lot of uh, women, you know, uh, um, from, uh, uh, from Srebrenica, mothers of Srebrenica, first of all, and then all the mothers from the Balkan, you know. And um, uh, I was wish, uh, wishing in, in uh, this movie to, to show all the mothers, all Balkan mothers. And uh, yeah, um, this morning I I got a message from a friend from Croatia, from Zagreb, and uh, she said uh, to me that uh, uh, she she was a show uh, show uh, she uh, her mother in me in Aida, of course, because uh, her mother is from Bosnia, and uh, I I don't know exactly what the so story with uh, her and uh, her mother. But uh, it's interesting. Uh, she she always uh, in this message uh, talking about mothers and what is mother. Um, yeah. I, um, Yasmila, I have a, a question for you concerning the, the the script, which I think it's you. It's it's extremely well constructed and balanced. And if I say I have one scene, I mean, I adore the film, but I have a scene I really love in the film, and I'm always thinking about this one. It's when um, you, the, the character of uh, Aida, is uh, meeting one of the students or pupils and say, hey, how are you, the Serbian? And I think it's, uh, 
is fantastic because it's giving another perspective. How, how are you? Uh, so as a mother, but as a teacher, as the same community. And I think it's a very tender and a beautiful short scene. Can you tell us uh, why did you choose to put this scene? And I think it's very short and less is more. It says a lot on, um, about just this little scene. I heard a lot of stories where um, people were on opposite sides, students and professors. Sometimes professor would be oppressor, sometimes it was a student. And um, I wanted to, to, beside the fact that I wanted audience to remind that she was teacher, she had her, uh, she had her pupils. Um, I also wanted to, to, to remind us that we, you know, the audience that we all live together. It was, you know, Aida knows his mom. She was in a parental meetings. They, they are very close to each other. And what was interesting is that um, actor who is playing this student was actually Jasna's and Boris's student in, um, in Novi Sad Academy. So it was even a more personal um, connection yeah. Yeah. to do these kind of things. But for me, it was important to show, you know, that when war happened, all these relationships are perverted. They are suddenly completely crazy. And um, it can, you, one um, compliment for me was when I showed a film in Poland, uh, people said, I was thinking who of my neighbors, who of my students would do this to me? Yeah. I was immediately connecting, it is possible here. It's just the, you know, one, one slip away from this situation. And in the end of the film, um, actually, um... Uh, when everybody uh, gets back together, uh, living uh, together again and, and being at this uh, um, end of the year um, show. Um, for me, I have a very strange feeling because uh, I don't know if this means, this shows that peace is possible together again and uh, this is uh, what is happening uh, with you? Or is this, we are sitting on a barrel of powder and this can go back again like this, you know? And I was wondering uh, if you have a point of view uh, on this and, and how did you uh, make uh, this, uh, this scene, this ending? Yeah, so this is what is truthful for Bosnia very much because we live with people who are not, um, sentenced. Main guys are captured, but there are many people who executed uh, crimes and they are not uh, in, in, in prisons. Also, there are in police structures, in uh, um, po politics, in government. Um, and this is how it is. We learned after Second World War um, that uh, all enemies, all fascists were in prison, but it is not true. When you, um, I, at the moment I'm here in Berlin and when I talk to people, uh, a lot of Nazis after the war continue working in schools and in politics, in uh, important public uh, spaces. And I think it's important that we know that these kind of people live with us. They are not monsters who have uh, big teeth and, uh, you know, the, the uh, horns. They are human beings. Mm -hmm. They are capable of everything, but they are our neighbors, our, um, you know, sometimes even friends. This is, for me, putting everything on a very human level. And as you said, it's a question at the, at the end of the film. Will these kids repeat the same thing or they will you know, open their eyes a little bit and um, see stuff differently. Yeah, this is uh, the topic of uh, Anna Arendt, of course, uh, talking mm. about this. And uh, this is, I have a question. It's a production question about the shooting because uh, most of the time when you see a crowd, I said a huge crowd like Game of Thrones uh, crowd, it's digital. Or if it's not digital, it looks um, academic. And in the hangar, when all the crowd is, it's uh, actors, so characters and costume. How did you realize this? Because uh, but first it takes time, it's expensive, but it works because most of the time when you have a crowd, it's too cheap 
oh, it's too much, but the size is so um, credible and so true. Can you tell us a little bit how you, you directed all these people for this uh, scene, which are absolutely not um, academical or conventional? Yeah, so we thought a lot how to do this mass scene. So uh, audience has to have feeling it's a lot. It's uh, always a lot that is present. But of course, we didn't have money uh, to do it many times. So we really found moments when it's crucial and necessary and the rest of the film. So if you calculate, there are not so many uh, scenes with, with masses, but those who uh, those scenes that are with masses, we really try to put um, all effort in those. So there is, um, you know, sometimes we had 500 extras and then we multiply them and a very good company from Netherlands did these multiplications. Also, we took care of, um, of costumes, of stuff that they are changing. So we had really great um, director assistant from, from Serbia who had a lot of experience in this. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of energy who, who put it in those scenes. And the rest, we really tried to cheat a little bit, you know, just to feel audience, to have it in the sound, to uh, show little parts so that people believe it's this. But we, we were really thinking a lot and, and making a lot of... Um, sketches and like also with um, in the exterior scenes with buses we had for each situation um, a maquette with the with the buses how to position buses in each scene that they are hiding that you have feeling it's there but sometimes we had just you know 100 extras and it has to feel like 20,000. So this was a lot Magic of... Magic of cinema. Yes, yes <laughs> definitely. Has the film been released already in Bosnia and Serbia? Yeah, in Bosnia, we, are, uh, we released it in cinemas in October. And um, it's really going well. But only half of Bosnia, um, we, we can show the film. In um, half of Bosnia, which is Republika Srpska, um, owners of cinema were afraid to show it. So only in this half we are uh, we are showing and we are still beating tenant. So <laughs> I'm really happy for this. <laughs> and now we started with the VOD platform because it's um, you know distributors in Serbia were also cautious. Uh, cinemas in Croatia are um, closed. So we thought okay because the, the interest of people were high and we said okay let's do VOD platform. And now people are watching it on, um, uh, yeah, at their homes, which is also, you know, I'm as as a filmmaker, I'm so much against um, this kind of um, showing of the films we, because we made it for a big screen. Every Yasna is playing with her, you know, smallest nerves, and I really want people to see this. But on the other hand, we are overcoming censorship in a way with this so i find it also interesting that that this this kind of thing is happening yeah but i i really think uh, personally this is a film to show to any school in the world and the fact your film was screened in srebrenica at the memorial and i saw some images of course very emotional is give a validation about uh, as um, an official film i mean i'm sorry to say that because the film uh, in, in terms of uh, cinema, it's really beautiful, but it has to, to be the film. And then the fact he was uh, uh, playing in Srebrenica Memorial give a value of the film, I think. So what do you think ab ab about that and the future of the film? Do you think the film should be shared for the schools in the world? or? When we decided to make this uh, premiere in Memorial Center, I really wanted uh, that we invite for this premiere uh, only young people. So very first um, screening, later we did also for um, survivors and people from Memorial Center and citizens of Srebrenica, but very first one, which I really insisted on was for young people. Uh, first of all, to say, um, look, we should not avoid looking at things. The second thing is young people have nothing to do with this. 
you know, they shouldn't feel guilty for what, what happened. They shouldn't feel, um, you know, if, if they are from the side of the victims, that this is a burden that they have to carry. I have a feeling that film can liberate people, that, you know, that we are not um, shying away from hard subjects. We should not put hard subjects under the carpet. I think one of the reasons why uh, war what happened in the 90s was also that we were hiding many crimes that were happening in Yugoslavia after Second World War. You know, we, we didn't talk openly because the whole ideology was brotherhood and sisterhood and let's not mention bad things. I think life is consisting of good and bad things. And um, I would like young people to know, okay, parents made really horrible things, but let's emancipate from, from them. I think we all need in our region to emancipate from our, our ancestors. And that's why I invited young people. And it was really great because there were people from Serbia, from Croatia, from all Bosnia, also Republika Srpska. And one guy, he was in his 20s, um, he was the first one to talk because we had Q&A after. And he said, you know, I'm um, born as a Serbian. That's my identity. I'm, I'm given. But I would like that my friends see this film to, to see why they are celebrating such a crimes, you know, to understand that uh, these crimes should not be celebrated. And for me, this was the biggest uh, achievement, really biggest war, uh, award that I, that I can get because I know that this young man was living 20 years under such a propaganda that he shouldn't feel anything for others, that he was, uh, you know, bombarded with um, false facts or things like that. And he was still able with the film to identify and to go through things which they, uh, the media and politicians tried to erase for 20 years. So for me, this is a power of film, that it can take you away from your um, regular or, or stuff that you are educated with if, um, yeah, if, if you are open enough. We feel, we feel that our, our acting job nowadays are really much more important, I think, in the sense of uh, doing those things. There is uh, really small part of people who are thinking about what we are doing in this way. We are going to uh, uh, to entertain. We are we are doing a lot of other things, but this one is uh, about the opening and. Uh, trying to to make our con conscious much more wider yeah. you know that is that is the main thing why why i'm doing it's what you are doing with the, with the question you asked me why why I, and how i did this uh, this character of mine you know that that was the idea you know really we need really to understand our job here I'm going in this region but also that that's happening in the whole world you know with this coronavirus you know the, the dividing us dividing is happening everywhere on, on this planet and as as a humans we have to understand that we are not different in in any way one thing that we learn living here in in, in this region uh, until the war came, it was it was Yugoslavia, you know, and we were not. Maybe it, it, it is like that. Yasmila said that we were we were hiding something under the carpet, you know. But from the other side, when we were kids, you know, we didn't have such a feeling about that national you know dividing you know which which led us which led us to the, to the war you know we were never living with that with that consciousness you know yeah. and nowadays i think 
I will say once more that opening and uh, making this consciousness wide and uh, with the trying trying to to avoid uh, this happen to happen and any time again you know yes. but it's not going like that here i think yes especially these days with all the populism and nationalism i think the film is extremely yeah. accurate uh, yeah. these days <laughs> very important and it's so important to show it um Jasmila, Boris, uh, all of us, all of you, um, thank you so much. Yasna. Yasna, thank you so, so much. We, we can't wait to see uh, how you are skiing in our slopes soon, next year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so, I am really in love with your festival because it focuses on European films and you really feel love for films and closeness of all people who are there so it's really um, I, i'm so much looking forward that we make it in uh, as i in told the Guillaume told you you are you part are of the family guys who are telling us that we are in europe you know <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> you're right that's also a good feeling <laughs> that's also a good feeling yeah <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh, thank, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Have, have a good festival. Yep. Thank, thank you. Festival, yeah. Good luck for the film. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye -bye. Ciao, ciao.